Thanks for joining me in this case study. In this case study, we'll be discussing Jose, who came to me from the United States and wanted to enter Canada for a business. And of course, some leisure trips as well. Unfortunately, he did have some misdemeanor offenses on his record that prevented him from entering Canada. And so these misdemeanor offenses were kind of scattered. There was about four in there and it all happened one, if I recall, 1990s, then sometime in the 2000s and then recent, etc. And so why I'm mentioning this, why this can be seen as a problem is that the officer will question your rehabilitation. If your offenses are sporadically kind of spread around, it shows to the officer that maybe it's possible that you might reoffend again. So the onus is on the client to demonstrate that no, I will not reoffend, especially while I'm in Canada, and that I've learned from my experiences. So if an offense happens in the 1990s and then 2000s and then 2015 and then 2020, it almost shows to the officer that you have not learned from your experiences, that it is possible that you're reoffending. And so one of the key components here that you might want to add, besides a very detailed remorse personal statement, is anything that you've done to show growth. This could be volunteer, this could be maybe you've taken additional classes of rehabilitation, um, especially when it's a DUI, you usually are required to take certain classes. Um, sometimes cl my clients have volunteered at, you know, church or, or so forth. So getting documentation, letters of references to demonstrate that you've taken ownership and responsibility of these offenses and that now um, this won't happen again is very important. Try to refrain from explaining to the officer as to why they happened. A lot of clients think that the circumstances of the offense might, you know, explain to the officer why that offense happened. So for example, he wanted to explain in his personal statement that he went through a divorce and a hard time, etc. I usually do that if it's a one-time offense. But if it's multiple offenses and multiple times you have, you know, things happen in your life, it raises the question to the officer that in case something again happens to you, will you go back and perhaps offend again? So explaining the circumstances of the offense, I will only encourage you to do that if it's a one-time offense. If it's multiple offenses, you don't want to focus on that. Um, you want to focus more on the future and what you're currently doing that shows to the officer that you're not going to re-offend again. The other key here is, remember I said at the beginning that it was business and leisure. Make sure that the first trip, especially the first trip, is for business, something very important. Because leisure, if you wanted to go fishing or hunting, most likely would not be accepted at the port of entry and the consulate. So explain to the officer that this is important for the business and how the business will be affected if you're not entering Canada and the economic loss that Canada might face in case this person doesn't enter, et cetera, et cetera. Once you obtain the document, then of course, for the validity of that document, you can enter for business, you can enter for leisure, etc. because now the document is approved. So your first initial entry or your first initial application of why you want to enter should be something strong, should be under humanitarian and compassionate reasons for a business, for example, not leisure. That, of course, flips if you are only a one-time offender and a minor offense, um, then it's okay to say it's for leisure, it's temporary, etc. So depending on what the offense um, was, how long ago that offense was completed, how many offenses are we talking about, and if you've actually taken the responsibility and submitted an application to the consulate, only once I know those four answers can I tell you if a leisure trip at the port of entry is recommended. So in this particular case, we went the business route and we submitted at the consulate. I did not recommend the port of entry because I was hesitant um, in that respect. And thankfully, the client was able to wait the extensive, uh, unfortunate eight to 12 months processing time. 
But after eight to 12 months, the client was approved and was now able to enter for the validity of that permit. So these are very important. Make sure that you get the first application approved and thereafter, whether you want to travel for business or leisure, that's up to you. So if that's you, please give me a call. Until next time. Thank you.